Good evening, and welcome back to a perfectly ghoulish room by room. Sherry was your Halloween hostess touring the haunted parlor, but I'm going to join you as protection, or perhaps you prefer to think of me as a guide as you peruse the dining room. Well, I understand there are certain Halloween delicacies available if you're hungry. Shall we? Well, let's begin at the table where we can pick up our dining instruments and appetizers. Ah, and the tone is set by the formal black and white color scheme with a touch of eerie green to accent. And don't you adore the once live centerpiece? I believe him to be a guest from years past, jarred by his indecision to stay or to go. He now floats or hangs a sentry over the instruments required to dine, which I might add are neatly divided into groups and displayed for your pleasure in tiny handmade coffins. Well, let's hope it's not an omen of things to come. And of course, I would be remiss if I didn't point out the crafty use of broken branches added to the chandelier, their thin and broken points reaching out as if to pierce a passerby. Now, allow me to lead you to the buffet. I see a witch's brew is boiling in the cauldron, and she may still be around. Her book of spells of incantation is open to one of my favorite recipes, putrid ditch water. And look, all of her ingredients are ready for the making. With jars of creepy crawling gunge, there's eyeballs, spiders, even a tiny dish of toenails. <laughs> yum, yum. And don't try to snitch a taste. This witch's pet raven is perched at the ready to pluck off a bit of bony flesh from one who gets too inquisitive. Fortunately, I'm not a bit hungry because those ghoulishly disgusting specimen jars and appetizers could make someone with a queasy stomach leave without having supper. But you know, there are so many other great spooky projects we created in these rooms that won't make you sick. They'll just add a lot of fun to this year's Halloween bash. And let's start with our friendly bats. Our dimensional bats were made out of children's black socks stuffed with fiber fill, hot glued to stay in a ball. Black belt was cut for wings, and black pipe cleaners were attached to the back to allow maximum positioning. The wings, ears out of felt, and legs out of pipe cleaners were just hot glued to the socks. Red sequin eyes were the finishing touch. Now, some of our bats were simply cut out of black craft foam. They were attached to the wall with push pins or hung from the ceiling using thread. One of my favorite gruesome additions, though, to Matt's dining area were the bloodshot eyeballs. Now, these were formed out of polymer craft clay and baked in the oven. Just follow the directions that come with the clay. Once they were cool, we used red ink and an artist brush to add the veining. Now, another great Halloween project is safe candles. Just use a large glass container with a flat bottom and embellish the outside with terrifying Halloween stamps. Then. Prop pillar candles in the center and surround them with non-flammable materials like black fish tank gravel. Now a variety of these in the center of a Halloween table setting could be just the inspiration you need to formulate a concoction that'll send your guests over the edge. See, everything seems normal back here in the shop. Well, I think. Well, let's get started making our own canister set of specimen jars. Now for maximum effect, find a variety of interesting shaped glass jars, then to create the murky preservative fluid, add some food coloring and a tablespoon or two of milk to water. This should create the muddy gray mixture befitting a collection of juicy insects. Even plain colored water can render an uneasy feeling if the color you mix looks like blood from rotten and decayed ears. Decayed ears, yuck! But the spookiest jars of all are the ones with either witch faces or alien faces in them. This one is made out of a Halloween mask with the addition of some craft hair. I kept the water fairly clear on this one so the face would show through. However, these murky and frightening jars of color with the white alien faces inside look best when they are just barely able to be made out. That way, the fact that it's just a mask doesn't show and it looks like a real head then cap some of the bottles off with a piece of ragged gauze and some wax string for an eerie effect. Now onto the coffin silverware trays. These little black coffins were made out of six mil black craft foam. Start by measuring the utensils you plan on using so that your coffin boxes are long enough. Next, draw out a basic coffin shape for the bottom of the coffin. Using a mat knife and a straight edge, cut out the coffin bottom. 
Next, you'll need to fashion the six side panels. These are obviously various sized rectangles cut to be attached to the outside edge of the bottom. Once the pieces are sized and cut out, hot glue them to the base and to each other, and your coffin trays are ready for Halloween. These look extra spooktacular propped up on the table with bunched up napkins or craggy moss as if they're popping right out of the ground. Now stay with us, there are still more frightful ideas to come at a haunted fireplace.